AP 120, Chapter 7, Bones of Lower Limbs. So, again, we're continuing with the appendicular skeleton. Now talking about the bones for the lower limbs. To start with, the pelvic girdle is the structure that attaches the lower limbs to the axial skeleton. And the pelvic girdle is made up of two bones, uh, collectively known as the os coxae, so right hip bone and left hip bone. Um, also known as the os coxae, so os coxae, os coxae. So that's what we're going to be using rather than hip bone. Now, the pelvis is different from the pelvic girdle. The pelvis consists of the bones that help to form the pelvic cavity. So this includes the two os coxae, the sacrum, and the coccyx of the axial skeleton. So four bones make up the pelvis, forming the pelvic cavity. Here is uh, two views of the os coxae, medial view, lateral view. Uh, we have three component bones that eventually fuse to form the os coxae. And so we continue to name those regions based on the names of those bones. So this includes the ilium, which is super, uh, superior, the pubis, which is anterior, and the ischium, which is posterior. Pubis, I'm uh, sorry, ilium, pubis, ischium. Now, when you look at the os coxae, we see this very large hole. That is the obturator foramen. Surprise, surprise. One of the things that passes through it is the obturator muscle. So, obturator foramen. Then we have this socket here. That's called the acetabulum. So, the socket of the os coxae is called the acetabulum. Then this long, rough ridge at the top of the ilium is called the iliac crest. And then this point at the anterior end of the iliac crest is called the anterior superior iliac spine. Anterior toward the front, superior toward the top, iliac because it's part of the ilium, spine because it sticks out. And then down at the uh, inferior end of the uh, ischium, we see this large rough patch. This rough, rough structure here is called the ischial tuberosity. And that's actually where we usually sit on the hip bones when we're sitting down. All right, the joint that connects the two os coxae together is called the pubic symphysis, cartilaginous joint with a big, thick piece of cartilage. And that kind of cartilage is, is it hyaline, elastic, or fibrocartilage? Hope you remembered it is fibrocartilage. And then there's an angle between the two pubis parts of the os coxae called the pubic arch. All right, male and, male and female um, hip bones or os coxae are uh, structurally different. And this is mainly to help increase the outlet for uh, childbirth in the female. So two important, well, three important um, differences. One is the Pubic arch in females is much, much wider, greater than 90 degrees. In males, it is narrower, equal to or less than 90 degrees. Then, of course, the females' iliums are more flared out for supporting that infant during pregnancy. And then this space here in the back is narrower in females than in males. So those are some of the differences between the female and male um, pelvic girdles. All right, here is the femur. Femur is the longest bone in the body. It's found in the thigh. It has this large, smooth, rounded knob called the head. Head of the femur fits into the acetabulum of the os coxae. Then there's this lateral rough patch, very big, called the greater trochanter. And then uh, a little lower is a lesser trochanter. That's also a rough patch, but a bit smaller. Um, then down at the distal ends, we have these two rounded knobs, the lateral condyle and the medial condyle. The medial condyle is going to be on the same side as the head because the head is going to be facing in, going to be facing medially. Uh, then we have the patella, patella or kneecap bone. It's a rather triangular in shape, part of the knee. So here is the knee joint. We got the femur with its uh, lateral medial uh, condyles. We got the patella. 
And then we got the tibia. So those are the three bones that help to form the knee joint. Uh, further distal in the lower leg is the tibia, that's very thick, and the fibula, which is much thinner. So the tibia is the medial bone, the fibula is the lateral bone. And the tibia is significantly thicker because it's the weight-bearing bone of the leg. It's carrying most of the weight of the body. So with the tibia, we have at the top uh, a lateral and medial condyle. These condyles are flat rather than rounded, but they are still smooth. So medial condyle, lateral condyle. Uh, anteriorly sticking out is a pointed rough patch called the tibial tuberosity. And then go down to the distal end, there is a chunk of bone sticking down medially called the uh, distally called the medial malleolus. And the medial malleolus is a guide to let you know that this is the medial condyle. So on the same side as the medial malleolus is the medial condyle of the tibia. And if you go down to the uh, inside of your ankle and you feel that big bump sticking out, that is the medial malleolus. And of course, here's the fibula. And at the distal end of the fibula, it has a rounded piece of bone tissue sticking down. And that is the lateral malleolus. Fibula is lateral, so it has the lateral malleolus. And again, if you go down and feel your ankle, the big knob of bone sticking out on the outside of the ankle is the lateral malleolus of the fibula. All right, here is the foot, uh, somewhat similar to the hand. The foot has seven bones helping to form the ankle. These seven bones are called the tarsals. So collectively, these are the tarsals. However, two of the tarsals names you'll need to remember. Uh, first is the talus. The talus is the tarsal that articulates, that forms a joint with the tibia. So here's the tibia, so the talus would be right down here. Talus. And then underneath the talus is this large block of a bone called the calcaneus. So the heel bone is the calcaneus. Above or uh, proximal to that is the talus. And going down a little distally, we have uh, these five bones here. These are the metatarsals, numbered one, two, three, four, five, based on one being the same side as the great toe. Metatarsals. And then uh, distal to those are the phalanges. And surprise, surprise, there are 14 phalanges making up the toes. Again, they're referred to as proximal, middle, and distal. So this would be proximal phalanx five, middle phalanx five, distal phalanx five, three phalanxes per toe, except for the great toe. The great toe only has two phalanxes, the proximal phalanx one and the distal phalanx one. So remember, you have 14 phalanges making up your five fingers and 14 phalanges making up your five toes. So a phalange is not a finger or toe. A phalange is a bone found in a finger or toe. And that is it for this part of the lecture.